everybody. Hello. Uh, for the past few years, I've been working with uh, UBM Tech, who run GDC and, and the IGF Independent Games Festival. Um, some of the projects I was working with them on uh, included running runningindiegames.com, uh, Indie Royale bundle bundle site that took everybody that wasn't on Humble Bundle and uh, GDC Vault, and up until June 1st, I was working with them, and now I've joined Indie Fund, which is a alternative to publishing, traditional publishing. It's run by people that made World of Goo, um, Ron Carmel, Kyle Gabler, Parade Guy, Jonathan John Blow, uh, Kelly Santiago from That Game Company, and some other people. Don't want to list them all for you. But their, their main goal is to provide funding to people like Ben Esposito, making Cachino over there. <laughs> yeah, they want to help advance the medium of games and also help developers become financially independent. So my role there, since I don't have any money, is just to help them find developers like yourselves that you know, want to make a special game but need a little bit of help to do that. Um, but what I want to talk to you about today was a project that I got to do at um, at UBM before I left, called Alt Control GDC, which is short for Alternative Controllers. Uh, it debuted in March. We, we were able to get 15 developers from uh, around the world. They they got four free GDC tickets to come out and show show their gadgets. They're all like one of a kind, unique input devices. And since this was demo night and I don't make anything, I wanted to instead demo the stuff that they've made, and and in hopes to inspire you all to start making some crazy gadgets of your own. Um, let's see. And as you can see, this is an Engadget article, um, pretty pretty popular website for, for tech news, so this this kind of thing was catching people's attention. They've got coverage on Rock, um, Destructoid, Polygon, um, you name it. They're all they're all interested in, in the kind of things that, that you guys are making, not not just video games, but, but how you play your games. So I'm just going to run through the slide. <laughs> slide this stuff. Awesome. Some of you might know Choose a Tron. It ran a successful uh, Kickstarter as a as a choose your own adventure mini arcade. Oh, I can't. And you might not be able to see the register tape, but you can choose first which of the four stories you wanna you wanna play with, and then uh, you know the story prints out. And the neat one of the neat thing many neat things about Choose a Tron. This one actually you know took quarters and started again that way, but. You, you left the display with, with the story, it was a register tape, so you had something tangible that you, know, you took with you when you were, showing, when you were done playing the game. Uh, let's see, another choose true. Uh, this was made by Co-op Mode, Please Don't Space Dog. It was a first person um, sort of air, airplane simulator where your co-pilot was a space dog and he he seemed to enjoy ruining ruining your flights, um, and so like everything that went wrong, you would see on the, the the mini device. But but since you had the Oculus on, you couldn't see your hands. You could only see in game what was flashing on the on the virtual mini device, and you had to rectify the problems in order to get the spaceship flying. Uh, this was slap fest. Um, there are two big. I don't know what they're called, sandwall buttons, but they're, they're on popping music. But on each side, where each, each, each player could, would be slapping the blue button to fill up, fill up this, this, uh, these lights, but the other player could then hit, each player could also hit a red button to like freeze the opponent, so that, like your goal was to fill up all your lights, but the opponent could stop you if you were tapping at the same time, that would freeze you, and then instead you would, you would you would start hitting the button to make the lights go back down, so it, it became a, a literal slap fest. Uh, slap fest. There's a better picture of this. Um, this was by Alexander Mar Martin Droken, um, called Bonus Look. I don't know if they have a, a good enough photo. This was this was a pretty neat install. There, there are two uh, computers set up, um, not side by side, but um, back to back where each, each player only had a certain part of the information. One player was the pilot um, navigating the, the player through mazes, and they, they could only use the, the four arrow keys. The rest of the, the keyboard was blacked out, and the other, the other player was the wizard um, telling the player, based on these cryptic instructions, uh, where to go. And, or rather, not telling the player where to go, but what, 
sorry, the, the player that was the pilot would relay information like, like there'd be a word on the screen and the player would then have to figure out, oh, I have to press the letter Q in order to, to make a door open. And so like everybody, you know, the two players had to communicate back and forth in order to get through the maze. Ooh, another Alexander Martin um, device was called Analog Defender. It's this rather, um, rather elaborate scheme of like a glitchy, uh, what do I call it? What's that game called? Space Invaders, there you go. And that's why it's kind of like Space Invaders. Analog Defender where you, what did you? Throw off power switches, you, you do bombs. There was a, there was all sorts of crazy knobs and gadgets that had you you affect in the game and creating all sorts of glitches. That was the kill switch. If, if it was just too much for you, you know, just blow up everything. <laughs> Pretty beautiful. And it, I don't know how they got it through the airport because this wasn't a suitcase and it, it's kind of suspicious. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the game there. Do you see it'll give you a waiver if you're if you're a, you know, an international person showing off the game but they won't they won't um, you know, help you get through customs. <laughs> RG, RGB brief, briefcase. Uh, it was an interesting unlock the briefcase game where you put on uh, headphones and you'd have to listen to a tone and then try to figure out what, what buttons corresponded with the tone. There are three levels of the puzzle and only in, on the last day some music master student figured out what, what that was and it opened up and they found all the candy inside. <laughs> uh, Lucky Frames, uh, oops, Rolf Pilar was a caterpillar sim. People got on the ground and rolled in little caterpillar bags uh, and looked up at a screen above them. They were, they were head, head to head, head to tail caterpillars eating, eating uh, apples and eating each other. Uh, as, as one of you would grow, if you, if you ate the, the rear of the other, you would instead grow. Whoever was the largest at the end won. You can see those pretty well. This was this was seven of what would be a dozen sliders, a, a, a one directional input device where it was just you know a slider going left to right. And this gentleman, Robin Baumgarten, actually made uh, a suite of games. Even though he made the controllers, he made the suite of games on the the train jam that that uh, that went from Chicago to, to to GDC. All sorts of pretty pretty cool stuff. And and they even they even had a they're even automated. So I caught. I caught people's attention too. Uh, Tenuina Teams, you might have heard of that with uh, Brandon Boyer and uh, Keita Takahashi. Where, uh, six, where you had 16 buttons and an arcade stick, but the buttons had, had lights and they would keep showing up at different places, so you, you can never be too sure where that, where that button was that did that certain action, so the, the player had to keep looking down at the controller to figure out how to, how to solve, solve the puzzle. I think I'm probably running on five minutes time. Anyway, there's there's tons of gadgets, and I'm sure there's there's tons more things that you guys start thinking about making, um, just in case it comes back next March. I can't I can't say for sure if it is, because you know GDC and all that. But hopefully, you know, now you know that there's this this big big place, and there's there's a big audience for for making all sorts of weird controllers. So thanks for your time.